hello welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Jess and yes I do often think about dying thank you for asking um, I bought this from a small shop in not the sun rays being freaking cock blockers hold on god damn it let's see is that better it's not better it's not better Okay, we'll just go with this light over here. Anyway, I got this from a small shop when I was at Comic-Con. I can link the shop below because I can't think of who they're called. But also I have another small shop to highlight that reached out to me to ask if they could send um, candles for me to try. So I'm just gonna pop in from past Jessica who did the unboxing. And thank you again to Novelix for sending me these lovely candles. These were hand poured in Little Rock, Arkansas. And this one is Snow Day, perfect for the holidays. Maybe this candle, if I burn it, will bring snow to Louisiana. Although, do I want that? Because they probably don't know how to react to snow. So maybe, it, ooh, ooh, maybe I don't want that. Do you see that? Can you see the glitter? Ooh, okay, ooh, Woodwick. This is cinnamon vanilla. I, oh, that smelled that as soon as I opened. That smells so good. It almost smells like a sugar cookie, but with like cinnamon on top. I'm just okay one more oh my god that smells so good I hope y'all can see the sparkle it doesn't need to for some reason okay now I have it's that song by Hoku for snow day the movie on this perfect day okay maybe I won't conjure snow but good god this sounds this this smells like it's gonna light up the room in the best way possible. Ooh, this feels like, ooh, this is a big one. Okay. And that was in a tin, if you couldn't tell for the first one. This is in a glass jaw. And this one is one day in December. Ooh. And you see the color? Ooh, that looks so nice with the tree. <gasps> More sparkle. Oh my God. Oh my God, these are powerful. Nutmeg and spice. Oh my God. That is Christmas in a candle. Jesus, this is, this is beautiful, this is perfect. I just want you to look at it with the tree. Look at it with the tree. Look, don't look at me, don't look at me. Oh, come say hi. You wanna smell the candle? Okay, say hi. It's me again in my donut. You say hi. Okay, let's see. We're gonna smell snow day. Let the baby smell it. Can you see him? He said this smells fucking amazing. I don't know which one is our favorite. Okay, let's smell one day in December. Here, smell it. Here, here, here. Oh, lady! Here. I, I know. Which one is our favorite? Oh, you cannot eat it. It's not edible. Which one is our favorite? We don't know. But let's say thank you. Thank you. No, for real. Thank you for sending us these. I don't. I'm going to have to burn. They're both wood wicks. I'm going to have to burn both of them to see which scent is my favorite. But these both oh, encapsulate the holiday season perfectly. So I will link um, their website down below. And then also um, they have like, I'm probably sure this will be on their page but this is like information on timelines for shipping and Christmas. And anyway, thank you to Novel Wicks. You should check them out, check out their candles. They obviously have holiday ones, but also candles related to bookish, bookish fandoms um, that we all know and love. So thank you again for sending these to me, check them out. And now let's get to the mess. Okay, so you saw the thumbnail, what we're talking about today, fast fashion in relation to publishing. Now, the article that I'm referencing, I saw mention, um, I don't know if I saw it on TikTok first or if I saw it on Google, either way, it is written in Bloomberg by Jessica Carl. And it says TikTok is turning the publishing world into fast fashion. So I just want you to pause there and think about what you think she means and tell me what you think she means in the comments below before we continue. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to read. It's not a super long read, so I'm going to read the majority of it and share my feelings. I'm also going to in I also want to input a TikTok video that I saw talking about this. 
and then discuss my feelings because I agree with a lot of what the person said, but I also have some feelings that are a little bit different. Um, so we'd like to process those. So first I'll go through the article, tell you my feelings, expound on whatever mayhaps, what haps, and then the TikTok video, further feelings, and we'll go from there. I don't know why I'm giving you an itinerary. Y'all know that it's a mess here, so just be along for the ride, but there it is. Whenever you're reading a book, specifically a fictional one, there's a high chance that you're going to sound at least one of the characters' names egregiously wrong. But if it's inside your mind and your mind only, is it really a bad thing? Perhaps not. What if you're reading a New York Times bestseller and you don't know how to pronounce the words in your own book? Rebecca Yaros, author of the Dragonfield Fantasy Fourth Wing, found herself in such a situation during a recent interview at New York Comic Con. She mispronounced several of the Scottish Gaelic words from the novel. But the blunder or the viral TikTok a native speaker made to express frustration with how the language was carelessly deployed hasn't slowed down her success. On Tuesday, when she released the sequel Iron Flame, it sold out on Amazon.com Inc. within 12 hours. And that's a more Gaelic spelling, so mm -hmm. or a more pronunciation. So that can be it can be right. I say that guy. After seeing that video, I have personal beef with Rebecca Yaros because Rebecca, I truly cannot believe that you wrote a book with Gaelic words in it and you were on an interview calling them Gaelic. Gaelic is a different language. You did not use Gaelic in your book. You used Gaelic, babes. She goes on to wildly mispronounce all of the Gaelic words that she used. I'm not too bothered about the way she pronounces Bezgaeath, but if you were pronouncing it like a Gaelic speaker, you would say Bas Skia. It's actually two words which means death, and skia, which means wing. She calls Violet's dragon Ternanok. I have no idea who that is. When I read the book, I read Tarnanok, which means thunder. Violet's other dragon, she calls her Andarnanornum. I don't know where all those extra syllables are coming from, but they are not in that word. You pronounce it Andarna Uram. It's three words and it means the second honour. The worst one is when she calls Mira's dragon Tyne. I don't know who that is. That word is Chenye, Chenye, and it means fire in Gaelic. It is genuinely laughable to me that American fantasy authors can get away with this. They can use minority languages in such a disrespectful way. They're just pronouncing them like English speakers. She's just sprinkling Gaelic words in there to add a bit of spice to her fantasy book. I am so sick of Americans using Celtic languages because they can't come up with their own names for things. It is incredibly lazy. I know I'll get backlash for this. I know people are going to say, but she wrote the books, but this is the way she wants to pronounce them. That is not how minority languages work. Minority languages, particularly Celtic languages, deserve respect, especially from Americans, fantasy American authors, who co-opt them to add a little bit of spice and magic to their fantasy books because they can't come up with their own names for things. It's lazy, it's boring, I'm tired of it. We're witnessing in real time how corners of the publishing industry have become akin to fast fashion. Pushing out a steady stream of content because they know readers influenced by social media reviews will keep buying despite any glaring ethical concerns. When I attended the midnight premiere of Iron Flame at the Barnes & Noble in Union Square this week, all four floors of the bookstore were buzzing with excited fans, many of them dressed up as dragon riders. And then came the Q&A portion, where Yaros readily admitted, guys, I don't speak Gaelic. I am really sorry, but I did find a tutor. I may butcher these words right now, so please have some grace for me. Next year, I will have some better pronunciations for you, I promise. I want to pause here, and I don't know in this interview if she said Gaelic or Gaelic because there's a difference. Irish is Gaelic and Gaelic is Scottish. So I don't know if they're saying that Yaro said that she didn't speak Gaelic or Gaelic. <laughs> because it just kind of fell out of me. And um, as Guy was born, and as I say that, ready? Guys, I don't speak Gaelic. I'm really sorry that I don't speak Gaelic. I'm, I'm really sorry, but I did find a tutor, so next year. Yay! As I butcher these words right now, please have some grace for me, because um, my, my four tutors stuck with me. Next year, I will have better pronunciations for you. So I'm very sorry, so please give me some grace tonight. A publisher shouldn't be comfortable with having an author so openly take inspiration from a subject matter they're not intimately familiar with. But social media has shifted things. Mentions of Yaros and her books alone have racked up more than a billion views on TikTok, where a subset called Book Talk has boosted the popularity of the romanticy genre. Yaros publisher 
Red Tower Books, a new imprint by Entangled Publishing that's distributed by Macmillan, is a byproduct of the culture. Although Red Tower is only a year old, it's been at the helm of some of the most buzzworthy fantasy book launches of this decade. And recently, the publisher managed to sell its most hardcore consumers a book sight unseen. There was no title or cover photo. People bought it purely on hype. This would be fine if the untitled book, which sold out at Target, was something new, but it wasn't. Readers received a special edition of Fourth Wing, a book that most of them already owned. The formula is similar to that of retail drops, where brands release limited edition fashion lines that sell out in an instant. But instead of clothes, readers are snatching up books. Perhaps that feels like a relatively guilt-free purchase in comparison. First, Red Tower makes a hush-hush announcement about a special new project on social. Maybe they've released... Maybe they're releasing a collectible edition with sprayed edges, or it's an entire, entirely new series. And in, in any event, they won't publish a ton of copies. For Scarcity is their friend because it creates a never-ending altar of hype. But the quality of the physical book and the writing inside it gets sacrificed as a result. One of the first lessons of Gallic is that the adjective comes after the noun, not before, as explained in TikToks prior to the Comic-Con gaffe about Yarrow's misuse of the language in the book. So I do not know how to speak Scottish Gallic, and the article has an example and I know I'm just gonna butcher it but it's basically her using the words all wrong and flipping them around wrong so basically like you know in Spanish how the how the adjective comes after so we would say a red car but in Spanish it's car red it's kind of similar to that I don't want to say it's exactly that I'm not a linguist I do not know this language but that is what that part is saying but I just don't want to further butcher the words um so it's but it, they did say um Imagine if someone were to similarly haphazard approach or have a similarly haphazard approach to a more well-known language like Spanish or Italian, readers would be up in arms and rightfully so. Scottish Gaelic is one of many minor, minoritized languages that fantasy authors, a lot of them white Americans, routinely draw inspiration from. For example, Sarah J. Mass, most known for A Court of Thorns and Roses, has been criticized for relying on the trope. When done properly, referencing historical events can be educational for readers. Yaros and her publisher should have employed a Gallic scholar to review her book before publishing. And the Fourth Wing audiobook and Iron Flame, should, which is currently rife with mispronunciation, should be orated by a native Gallic speaker, or at least someone who has taken time to learn it properly. The index could even include a pronunciation guide so that the readers could get familiar with the language and its history. These suggestions should be taken into consideration for future books in the series, as well as its TV adaptation. Just last week, the rights for all five books, three of, three of which don't exist yet, were secured by Amazon MGM Studios and Michael B. Jordan's Outlier Society. It would be true disservice if Scottish Gaelic terms ended up being mispronounced on screen too. Fiction novels may be an escape for some, but they are often rooted in somebody else's culture or origin story. When publishers and authors fail to handle those stories with care, it's more than disheartening. It's a reality check for fantasy land. So um, I wanted to go back up to, while I remembered it, is, oh, them saying the index could have included a pronunciation guide so that readers could get familiar with the language and its history. Can we get it for all fantasy books? Because you know people just be making up stuff and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna say it like this. And then years later, Sarah Janet, you're gonna say it's pronounced Aelin Ash River Galathineus. I'm like, girl, I ain't been saying it like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you if you have a fantasy book, one, and you're taking it from another language, yes, you should be making sure that it's correct and um, talking to people who are who speak that nan language as their native tongue and you know getting feedback I don't know seems like things that should happen in the publishing process and put in a goddamn pronunciation guide <laughs> I don't know why that's so hard this is off topic but it's just like in sequels can I get a in the last episode of or in the previous book can I just get a little synopsis in the front can I just get a little synopsis in the front of the book but anyway that's not the point so I saw this and I don't know what I thought she would be referencing in, in, in um, talk about fast fashion, but I, I think it's an interesting take to compare, especially with Red Tower books, what they're pumping out. But it's not just them. I think this could also be, go back and be connected to my video, uh, the two videos that I made about beautiful gowns and about publishing lately of beautiful books, but the quality inside being less than, um, often being very subpar. We know from, or at least if you've been here on this channel or following anything in publishing, how understaffed and underpaid it is in publishing. So I know that the people who are in charge of developing these books, editing these books, have a lot on their plate. And again, that problem is not theirs alone. 
or if I don't want to say it's their like this is their fault it's really the fault of the top for hoarding all the money and not wanting to pay people livable wages so that they can have enough people to equitably dis distribute these books to give them time and development so that they're actually quality books with also a beautiful exterior and so same here with the thing with red tower books and i am not i am never here to lie to you i too bought into the hype of the untitled red tower book because what we saw happen with the first is down here uh fourth wing book which i did read and i really did like actually i loved fourth wing I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the idea and I'm fine but I did love fourth wing um and I just bought it the regular edition it came with the um the edges were like this and then it sold out and then everyone was scrambling to pay all kinds of ungodly money for those and so yes I am not immune I am not immune to these things that I talk about on my channel I want that always to be apparent that I'm not coming here to preach down to you these are issues and they are reminders also for me <laughs> So yes, bought into that hype and then it was just yeah, a holiday edition of Fourth Wing. And both the holiday edition of Fourth Wing and Iron Flame releases, because uh, I got Iron Flame from Barnes and Noble, um, they all were just black sprayed edges, but they were done terribly. Like the the spray, the paint or whatever the color that was on the edges bled up onto the pages. Some of the printing wasn't good. They were damaged. Like it was a terrible job physically which usually these books are at least physically beautiful and look great but even they rushed to get these books out so quickly that physically they look like trash um there's nothing special about this holiday edition besides the color uh kind of matching more to iron flame um like the sprayed the uh designs on the edges are nothing to write home about and then the quality of the book now i said i loved fourth wing but i never said it is the best book of all time the most well written book and who knows if i went back and reread it now maybe i think it was terrible but when the time i read it is what i needed and i loved it and i really enjoyed it but i never said oh this Mm, this is Pulitzer worthy. This is the will be in line for the next booker. No. However, comma, I realize that or not I realize I just find it interesting. So that came out in what May, May of this year, April or May of 2023. And the sequel came out in November, which of course, if you read Fourth Ring, you really enjoyed it. And you saw you know how it ends, you were excited, you'd have to wait that long for the sequel. But we should have waited longer for the sequel, because that is a terrible I mean, if you liked the first one, the second one is worse. <laughs> I mean, if you hated if you hated the first one, the second one is worse. It just uh, it now it makes more sense if it was just a romance story because romance authors write their stories a lot quicker, but they don't have to take time to worry about world building and language and all of these different things and maps and, and serious plots like that. Not saying not taking away from a uh, romance writer's craft. I'm just saying that the fantasy aspect adds more time into writing books than just writing the romance between two characters, two or more characters. So had Miss Rebecca, this is not about Iron Flame, but anyway, that book should not have come out in November. Obviously, the distributor was not ready. Whoever was Red Tower, they were not ready. This was a clusterfuck. It was a disaster. Um, but also talking about that in the article um, with fast fashion, because I don't, I feel like I'm trying to think of my words because when I think fast fashion there are many things but my my number one comes is Shein but also there's like Timu and uh you some people would consider H&M and Zara and stuff like that fast fashion as well and it's in my mind I think of fast fashion as something you consume a lot of like you buy a lot of and you don't intend to keep to keep it for such a long time and so not to say that is not to like scapegoat red tower or entangled publishing whoever you want to blame for this hype of the book because like they said in the article people probably feel less bad about buying a book you know nothing about because it is a book something you intend to keep for a long time but i'm just saying those were my thoughts on what when i think of fast fashion that's what i think about all these things like people and our influencers doing these massive hauls of all these clothes of things they may they may wear once and then get rid of and i guess truthfully with a book you might read it once and then get rid of it or try to sell it but i i understand the, the comparison with the 
you know, just drumming up a lot of hype, trying to make a product cheap as possible, even though books are not cheap. Anyway, so I don't know where that's coming from. But drumming up a lot of hype so that you can sell a whole lot. But there is no, there's no really care there for the quality. And in this, this instance, it's both external and internal. Previously, I have seen more quality and care, thought and time being put into the exterior of books with all of the different additions and the sprayed edges and the painted edges and the naked hardcovers and the, you know, services like Fairy Lou, Alcrate, Illumicrate, all these beautiful books like on the outside, beautiful gowns. But the inside has been slipping and the original video that I saw talking about this the um, gentleman discusses that as well saying that over the last few years they've been noticing just even more grammatical errors in books and typing errors and just books that aren't edited like just bad and I am no let me make it clear here me and grammar never been friends but sometimes you can just read a book and be like what the that sentence made no sense or typing errors like and these are books coming from major publishers that are supposed to have gone through rounds of edits and multiple eyes and they have spelling errors and sentences that don't make sense and just run on things and just endless fluff when the book is 570 pages and it really could have been 320 and it is just I mean, I guess you really could call almost all of publishing fast fashion because they're really just trying to pump it out. And like I said also in my previous videos that I feel like they've been doing a lot of this, especially in like the book boxes for debut authors of marginalized identities to say, hey, look, look, we're doing it. We're publishing these books by these black authors, by these queer authors, by these indigenous authors or whatever. And they're not giving them the time to develop the story because just because you write a story doesn't mean it's ready once it's the rights have been purchased or whatever the deal is. Like sometimes things need to be cut out or this needs to be more fleshed out and more developed. And I don't, I don't think they're getting that time and not just books by marginalized authors, by all authors. So I really do the more I talk about this out loud it does make sense and not just I don't know if you can blame if you can solely blame TikTok though. Book talk really hit its height in 2020 um, during lockdown time of the pandemic but I feel like this decline I don't know I can't pinpoint a specific year 2020 is when I first started talking about books on the internet but I've been reading them beforehand but so maybe I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that the rise of book talk it has a direct correlation with the de the decrease, the decrease <laughs> in quality in books? I would love. I don't know how you would measure that, but mayhaps, maybe it does. Like I'm trying to think, and I'm like, well, 2020. That's almost four years ago now. This we're at the end of 2023, so maybe. Um, I saw someone else say it's the Colleen Hoover effect of books, and. I have said it here before too. I've discussed Colleen Hoover, have videos on her. I have read some of her books and love them and some other ones not so much. Um, but I understand why she's so popular because they're just very compulsively readable. They're very dramatic. Um, some people may say they're emotionally manipula manipulative. But again, I understand. And maybe I've been manipulated. I don't know. But I loved what I read a couple of them. So what I'm trying to say here is that the entire industry of publishing and you see you have these people up here at the top making all this money and then all these people below who need work and they're being severely underpaid and mistreated and then there's this subpar product that's being pushed out to consumers but we live in capitalist society and we have been trained and ingrained in our brain to consume 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 oh my god publishing is oh my god and i am a victim I'm going to insert this video. TikTok is turning the publishing world into fast fashion. That's the title of the article. I yes, finally someone said it. Finally someone said it. Quality is gone. I, I, I like, oh my God. I, and here's the thing. Like I started posting videos on this app because I love to read like trashy romance novels. You know, I've been doing it for like 15 years. It's been my like hidden thing that I came to TikTok to talk about because I was like, other people are probably gonna like this too. But with the boom that's been happening with these books, like specifically books like Iron Flame, where arguably I read Fourth Wing like right when it came out. And I just remember being like, eh, like that's not to say that if you liked it, it's bad. But I just remember I was like, mm, okay, not bad. But then the hype and the hype and the hype and the hype. And then this woman who wrote a 
arguably, eh, book, got a five book deal writes to a TV show and all of a sudden it's all anybody can talk about. So then she writes this other book that's like hyped, 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 like best book ever. She's like going on all these like marketing campaigns to talk about how amazing this book's gonna be. She writes a 900 page book and then it's, and then it's just what the fuck? Like what the fuck? That was how I felt while I was reading it. And again, not to say it's bad if you liked it, but I think this speaks so much more about the quality of the books that are getting pumped out. And the problem with that, and it's like, if you like these like books that are getting pumped out and you're into the hype, great, love it. But what's happening is that the good books, the books that are well-written, these like kind of like more obscure authors who aren't all over the media, who aren't getting pumped out by their publishing industries are getting, are getting lost in the weeds. Like last night, personally and i've read all these tiktok books i've read them all and last night i was trying to find a new book to read and i was looking on my goodreads and kindle for like hours hours because i was like where where's all the where's the meats like where, what is all this trash all this trash is what's getting pumped on my pages to read and i'm like i don't want to read this i want to read something that's good i want to read a good story something that's compelling something that like really grips me that makes me think that makes me question things and and again like i get this guy's video watch it because he's like this isn't a critique like if you're into these books and you're liking them great i love that you're reading but the problem is is i think that when you get into this like overhyped like quote unquote fast fashion great metaphor you lose value you lose quality and that it's just it's just it's just shitty because as someone who like loves a good quality story that i can sink my teeth into i'm having such a hard time finding it and i'm gonna try my hardest to start posting on here more and actually post about the books that i think are like well written and are a good story they're still gonna probably be trashy romance like let's call a spade a spade that's who i am but like good quality is really important to me and so i'm gonna start pushing those i don't post on here as much as i used to but i'm gonna i'm gonna really try it this is my commitment to you so stick around obviously i agree with that quality is decreasing my problem in this video from this person this is not something i don't know this person so please don't go find their social medias and attack them i don't know them never spoken to them a day in my life um anyway the disagreement i have is they continuously say like um you know talking about books like fourth wing and trashy romance and i i i have an issue there when we start talking about like trashy romance and whether or not that's like a good quality book and then they said at the end of, that they would talk about more books here that are well written but they'll still be trashy romance i'm like what are you what are your def your your terms your definitions are confusing me because i don't understand and i don't like that like I just feel like we can enjoy things. Maybe it's more campy. Maybe it's more out there than a traditional contemporary romance. But the, I don't know. The, I just get, I feel icky when people use trashy romance. And then here again is the problem but that with social media being the thing that sells books. And another problem I have with the concept of bindery that I've spoken about in another video is that reading is what? <gasps> Subjective, right? So what you think is this beautiful, exquisite, perfectly well-written, highly entertaining book. Someone else is like, that's pretentious, that's boring, that's dull. I hated it. No one, no one person is able to say this is a well-written, high-quality, entertaining book and everyone will agree. Like, that's never gonna happen. So again, there are plenty of issues with Fourth Wing with Rebecca herself and Iron Flame, her appropriation of the Scottish Gaelic language without even fucking learning about it. Multiple things. <laughs> like, like in most videos, multiple things can be true right you could have read fourth wing and enjoyed it and it is also not well written um maybe there were plot holes and obviously at the time i did not know the language that it was borrowing from um or i would have said something and and now i know so now i'm saying something we can also say that there have been good books released over the last 
several years but also that it seems like there's a heavier trend of the cover art and the exterior and the marketing of the book to be more important than the quality of the writing. We can both say that Entangled slash Red Towers marketing is smart and they're doing a good job while also saying mm, maybe you should put your focus into your author and making sure that if they're borrowing things from other cultures that they actually know what they're talking about and how to pronounce the pronounce these things and focus on the quality of your book and maybe have a longer timeline so that the quality of the book inside and outside could be better like all of these things can be true so that is one thing that bothers me about the internet in general especially when it comes to bookish spaces is it has to be this or this no 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 Venn diagram so much overlaps multiple things can be true at the same time I don't know if any of this made sense I always feel like I start out with such a concrete plan and then I, and then I get to the end of the video and I'm like did y'all get any of that <laughs> so anyway my realization during this process is that publishing really is functioning as fast fashion and that I have in the last few years made a conscious effort to divest myself from fast fashion um you know in the sense of clothing and not buying just like what's cute or trendy or just buying things to buy them and trying to wait and save my money to buy a more quality piece that's going to last me a long time and I also now and I here's the thing is I had a time where I was applying this principle and then I went back on it where I was like only buying books if it was like maybe a special edition of a book that I had read and loved or I would borrow it from the library first if I loved it maybe I would buy it later but I just wasn't buying everything so I need to get back there and I'm just trying to be honest with you because y'all know y'all have seen book hauls y'all know things that I buy so I'm not going to try to lie and say like I I these are the only books I own I do not fall into that trap like you dumb dumbs no this is our this is our uh our group of our therapy group we can go around in a circle we can state our issues and come up with solutions on how we are going to fight back because we continue to buy the books they're going to continue to pump them out like they have been um so yeah i don't have the answers i just always want this to be a form of discussion somewhere to maybe make you think about something you didn't think about before also a place where i just get to word vomit my feelings and that helps me come to realizations in the process if you can't tell so anyway if you have any um thoughts to anything that has been said in the video please let me know down below keep it cute keep it respectful because i will block or delete you quickly don't worry keep it cute honey please um but thank you again to novelix for sending me those candles i cannot wait to light them because they smell so good um just from smelling them not even lit so check them out and i will link the article down yonder of course and yeah any information or resources or thoughts you want to provide as long as it's respectful share it down below so uh stay hydrated moisturize sunscreen i'll see you in another one bye